Hello, Mr. K here again, talking about uh, warning lights today in our next series. So uh, a lot of lights on, a lot of lights that can come on your dash mean all mean different things. Some are serious, some you could probably ignore for years if you wanted to. Uh, we're gonna try to show you guys the difference today. All right, so <clears throat> we want to, uh, today I wanna tell you which lights and sounds are serious that are on your dash. And we're gonna to try to match each one with the system and tell you a little bit more about what's going on when those come on. And maybe a little bit about fixes for each light. Okay, first go ahead and uh, pause my video and watch this one at this time. Okay, should just watch that video that give you a uh, quick idea of kind of where we're headed today. So these are probably the most common uh, warning lights on the dash, and this is according to Motor Trend Magazine. We're going to go through most of these today. All right, the check engine light. Uh, it's also called the CEL in a lot of shop manuals, also called the MIL, malfunction indicator light. Um, can come in a lot of different ways. It may have a little engine symbol. It may say check engine. It may just say the word engine. But... Um, it's, it wants you to check something on the engine. Something is wrong in the engine and it, the computer doesn't like it. Okay, <clears throat> if your check engine light kicks on, it's usually not something that you need to immediately pull over to the side of the road and call a tow truck. Usually you can get away with driving for uh, a ways longer. In fact, um, I know several people <laughs> that have had check engine lights on for the life of their vehicle. Uh, I should say the life of their vehicle since they've owned it. They don't care. They just keep driving. Uh, sometimes it's pollution equipment related. Sometimes it's um, uh, engine related in terms of how efficiently it's running or how much fuel it's burning. But uh, a lot of times it's it's not something that you will leave you stranded on the side of the road. So um, again, <clears throat> I know a couple of the older older mechanics that I know um, that aren't much into computerized cars and they don't really worry about it. They just put a piece of black, black electrical tape over the check engine light and they keep driving. So um, not probably not the most dangerous thing, uh, not the biggest issue you could have. But the great news is you can go to uh, O'Reilly's, uh, most Napa's will do it, AutoZone, Advance, and they will plug in a code reader for free and tell you why your check engine light's on or why your computer's not happy. So to me, there's really no reason to not at least listen to it and just get it checked for free. And just talk about how common it is. According to Motor Trend, about 10% of the cars on the road have a check engine light illuminated. Uh, I'd venture to say it's more than that, at least in some areas of the country. So, okay, these are the most common causes of a check engine light. Again, <clears throat> according to Motor Trend, uh, oxygen sensor, and of course, uh, th that's your percentage of uh, fuel mileage loss. So that can be a big thing. Uh, the gas cap, that's a common one. A lot of people say, mechanics will say, if your check engine light goes on, first thing you need to do is go out and make sure your gas cap is on tight. Um, catalytic converter, ignition coil, spark plug and wires. Could be a lot of other things, but there you go. There's your top five. What if it's flashing? <clears throat> so what if your check engine light is blinking, not just on? That's a little bigger deal. Your car is trying to grab your attention. Uh, I would get that vehicle to the side of the road and shut it off as soon as you can, get that towed and checked out because that typically means is the engine is misfiring in such a way that it cannot compensate for the issue. So uh, what happens is it may be dumping raw fuel into the exhaust, that raw fuel collects uh, or then can get down to the catalytic converter, ignite and it can burn up your cats. Uh, cats can be as much as two grand a piece and you could have up to four of them. So I would, I would pull over, shut it off. Now, is it going to leave you stranded on the side of the road? Um, probably not. So again, it's an emergency. You, maybe you don't care about your catalytic converters or uh, you're driving a car that you know it's already been removed from. Your check engine light's flashing. You could probably just keep going where you're, wherever you're going and get it checked as soon as you can. But uh, again, Typically something you do want to get checked out. All right, TPMS light, what does that stand for? 
How about tire pressure monitoring system? Flat tires, okay. Remember TPMS lights don't necessarily mean your tire's flat. It means your sensor is um, either detecting that it's too low pressure or your sensor is not sending a signal to your uh, computer that connects to your dashboard and it's kicking that light on because it doesn't see all four sensors. Okay. So <clears throat> of course the fix for this is pull over in a safe spot, check all your tires, air them up. If they're all aired up, you probably have a bad TPMS sensor. That's something we'll learn how to do in class. Um, it's pretty common on vehicles 10 years or older, uh, expected life uh, of a TPMS sensor is 10 years. So <clears throat> it's 2021. If you're driving an 07 BMW, let's say, and your TPMS light is on and you've never had new sensors put in your tires and your tires are all aired up to where they should be, you probably just have a bad TPMS sensor. You can just you can drive on that for thousands of miles. It's not going to hurt anything. Just know that you're not going to actually know if your tire gets low. Fuel light. I almost didn't put this in here because I know it can, it's pretty basic, pretty common sense. But um, I didn't know the answer to this. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to look it up. And from what I found, most research uh, concludes that you can go about 50 or excuse me, 30 to 50 miles once your low fuel <coughs> fuel light comes on. So, but should you go 30 to 50 miles? Okay, um, we'll get into this later in the year, but your fuel actually helps cool your fuel pump. Your fuel pump is in your tank. And if you let your tank get below, most mechanics will say, don't let it get below a quarter of a tank. Because if it gets below a quarter of a tank, um, 25%, when you take corners, the fuel will the fuel may slosh away from the pump, and the pump will run dry for a second or two, and then get fuel back. And you won't notice it in the way your car runs, but every time it does that, your pump is degrading itself. Uh, it's it's dying a little bit. It, it needs fuel to be lubricated and to be cooled. So, um, so keep at least a quarter tank, quarter tank of gas in your tank. Okay, about the SRS light, uh, I meant to, <laughs> I meant to um, change these photos so the, so the airbag one came up later so you could try to guess what that stood for. But SRS is another name for airbag or supplemental restraint system. Okay, that light's on, your airbags aren't going to work. And there may be a manufacturer out there that uh, this is not true, but I've done most of my stuff I've done with Fords and most of most Fords, at least all the ones that I've read up on, if that light's on, none of the airbags will work. Not, not just whichever one's having the problem, none of them will. So um, it's a pretty big deal. If that, if that light goes on, you want to get that fixed. However, it's not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road. So there's two sides of this coin. Uh, because if, you're, if you grew up in cars that didn't have airbags anyway, like me, and driving 70s, 80s stuff, um, you may not care if your SRS light is on. So, um, you know, be it as it may, but most customers are going to want this to get checked out pretty quick. But again, probably not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road. <clears throat> All right. Oil pressure light. This is a big deal. Uh, if your oil pressure light comes on, if it's, if it's accurate and you truly do have low oil pressure, you may have as little as three minutes before your engine explodes uh, or seizes up. And you may have as much as, you know, three hours, depending on what you're doing with it, but um, it's a big deal. So if this comes on, pull over, shut it off, call tow truck. And that's what can happen if you, uh, if you don't blow holes in the side of the block and that engine is totaled. Okay. Overheat light. <clears throat> Uh, older cars, it may just it may just have a temp light that comes on. The reason why I put that up there is my first car, seventy nine Lincoln, when it would overheat, and it did. And that's a long story. When it would overheat, uh, it didn't have a gauge or anything. It had what's called idiot lights, where a light would just come on because it's an idiot light because by that time it's too late to um, plan for it. So a light would just come on. It would say temp, 
That's all it would say. And you knew that the engine was overheating. Most of your newer cars are going to have this little uh, thermometer. It looks like it's got a sail attached to it floating in water. <clears throat> and that it typically means uh, your engine's working too hard or there's malfunction. So if you're just driving your car to school as you do every day or your car to work and this comes on, you've probably got a malfunction. But if it's you know 90 degrees and you're going uphill in North Carolina, uh, pulling a trailer, or you have five people in your car and your engine's working harder than it ever has, it may just be it's working too hard and you just need to back off a little bit, slow down, um, not take those hills anymore. So what can we do in the moment? Because this is not necessarily something that it's not going to instantly blow up your motor. Uh, it could, I mean, it could maybe 15 minutes later, you could have major issues, but you have a little bit of time. So what you can do, <clears throat> turn your heat on, turn your heat on high. If you turn your heat on high, that pulls heat away from the radiator, puts it into your, into the cabin of the vehicle. It'll be annoying for you, especially if it's 95 degrees, but it makes a big difference. Uh, I've done that several times, including, uh, my wife's Explorer just about two years ago when the radiator fan clutch went out. We we're in downtown Indianapolis, about 95 degrees, 3 p.m. traffic jam. Um, had to turn the heat on and it knocked it down by probably 35, 40 degrees. So it does make a difference. Battery light. Okay. <clears throat> Battery light. Uh, well, here, let's let's throw the definition up there. It means your vehicle's voltage is falling below 12.6 or below a set point that the manufacturer has chosen. But the point is your battery's not charging, okay? This light's gonna kick on when you turn your key on before you start the car, that's normal. That's because your engine's not on yet. And so the alternator's not spinning, it's not charging the battery. So again, it's normal for this light to be on before you turn the engine on. But if the engine's on and the light's on, you're most, most likely your alternator's going bad. If it's an older car and it has a separate voltage regulator, it could be that. Or of course, it could be battery uh, going bad, um, which is probably the least likely in terms of making that light kick on, in my opinion, but it does happen. So how long do you have? If this light kicks on, is it an emergency? Do you have to shut it off immediately? Probably not. Um, if you shut it off, it may not start back up because the battery may be dying. It takes a lot of starter power to start an engine. So I would not shut it off. Uh, proceed to wherever it is you're going, but just plan for the fact that the car may die any second and um, it may not restart. So uh, if you're about to take a three hour trip, you may head back home <laughs> 20 minutes uh, away and turn around and go back because your car could die any minute. But a uh, car very well could last, I think I put it up here, could last hours without charging. So my Alternator went out of my truck over the summer when I was moving, or excuse me, last summer when I was moving, I was going from Fort Wayne, I was going from Rockville to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and um, it, it died probably about a third of the way through the trip. I drove the, the last two and a half hours with no alternator with headlights on. Uh, headlights were kind of dim when I got there and the truck wouldn't restart when I shut it off, but I made it there. So batteries are pretty amazing things. They can last for quite a while, uh, but I also shut everything off. No no radio, no heater, no air conditioning, nothing, okay? ABS light. <clears throat> this is getting pretty common because a lot of people are driving uh, 90s, early 2000s vehicles until they die because the motors and transmissions are made so well that um, those vehicles are just lasting and lasting and lasting. So you're seeing a lot of ABS lights. I'm seeing a lot of ABS lights come into the shop. It stands for anti-lock braking. Um, <clears throat> if this light's on, it's not a, a huge dire emergency. It's just the ABS isn't going to work. And therefore you're going to be driving a vehicle. Uh, think of it as driving a vehicle with maybe seventies technology. So, um, or sixties technology because ABS is the proportioning valve or metering valve as well. So, um, anyway, think of that. Think of that as the fact that you may be skidding in, in turns and stops. If you try to lock up the wheels, you're going to have to pump the brakes to stop on slippery surfaces. So it's not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a dire emergency, but um, it's something you want to get checked out, especially if you didn't grow up driving vehicles without ABS. 
All right. And on that note, go ahead and work through your written assignment and have a good day.